What's up, everybody? It is February 27th, Tuesday slate, and we've got six games, which is my favorite size slate, so that's exciting. Uh, last night was, at first, really awesome, and then Anthony Davis showed up and uh, ruined everybody's fun. Um, I ran the top 250 lineups on the Fantasy Cruncher lineup rewind. All 250 had AD. All 250 also had Moutier and uh, Devin Booker. Uh, I feel good about the Moutier one. Um, I was definitely heavy on Moutier. But, I mean, you needed AD to do anything of value. Um, I thought I was just, I mean, I thought I had a reasonable amount of him, and it turns out that I needed 100% of him for it to matter. Uh my best lineup was 390.5. Um, obviously, it had AD and Booker and Moutier. But uh, ultimately, I was down, you know, more than 50%. Um, and that's going to happen on a night when AD breaks the slate. Like, you either, you, if you have him, you're almost assured the money. And if you don't, you know, it's going to be really hard to get there. You need less than 5x from all of your guys just to finish in the money. Um, like if you go and see that it's 315.7. Um, so you need 219.6 to hit the cut line with your last $45,000. Or 4.88x. So... It's, I mean, he breaks the slate. You, it's something that you have to have in order to uh, to thrive yesterday. Um, at halftime of the Bulls game, so or halftime of like the early games, I was in first here, which was a real panic attack inducing event. You know, Drummond was going off. I put up 197 in the first half of that lineup and still had Buddy healed to go. So I was like, okay, I need this to completely happen again to be in the neighborhood of, like, really banking a GPP. But, um, you know, best laid plans. Didn't matter. I got a little nervous, too. Um, if you watched the last minute or two right before lock of the live stream, uh, I switched two Drummond lineups to Towns lineups because I re realized I was a little lighter on Towns than I wanted to be and then Drummond had you know 35 fantasy points in the first quarter and I got super nervous that I was going to have video evidence of tinkering out of something that would have went ham but you know Drummond cooled off AD certainly didn't another 90 plus point performance and he's just on another level we all overthought it too many minutes when in all actuality it was 80 against the Suns. Why wouldn't he just absolutely beast all over him? And for those of you that also joined me on the the path to Alex Len, who finished with... I don't even know what the final number was. I'm terrified to look at it. 8.4 fantasy points in 20 minutes. Uh, just a brutal, brutal night. But... I mean, it's fun. It's fun to see someone go 16 of 29 from the field, 21 of 26 from the line, 53, 18, three assists, five blocks. Just, dude's got three fantasy, like, he's got three games in the 90s in the past 16 days. Three, three overtime games, too. That's kind of nuts. He's just... He's playing out of his gourd right now. Which just makes you wonder, like... I know this is going to sound ridiculous. How amazing... How much better would this team look if they were able to have traded Boogie at the beginning of the year for... And I know this is going to be, like, sacrilege, but, like, Otto Porter and something. You know, so salaries match. And then still make that Miritich trade... So you're running, you know, Rondo, Drew, Otto Porter, Miritich, um, 
and then AD. Like, just being able to, like, if you get a slightly different version of Rondo there, just or even using Drew, you know, Eton Moore, uh, Otto Porter, Miritich, AD, like, the floor would be spread perfectly, you know, Porter would probably, like, the defense would likely get better compared to having Boogie. Just crazy, man. You gotta get, they, they had their shot. Now it's gonna be who knows what next year. So yeah, those are the, these are the uh, top 250 lineups. And uh, you needed that triumphant, yeah, tri- triumvirant, tri- whatever. You needed those three. <laughs> Let's get into this. Um, like I said, six games. Uh, interesting slate. Uh, weird back to backs. This Nuggets Clippers game at 10:30 is going to be a driving force, I guess. But I don't know. I'm excited to play. Uh, so first up, we've got Hornets hosting the Bulls. Um, Hornets with a 113 implied total, which is fourth. They are 11 and a half point favorites, no, 10 and a half point favorites uh, at home against the Bulls. Bulls on the back-to-back. They were uh, not very good last night against the Nets. I didn't expect, um, I didn't expect them to be as bad as they were. What are you going to do? Levine is back for this game, so I assume Justin Holiday will not be playing, but Everything for the Hornets should be normal. So we'll start with Kemba. Um, he's 9,000 on FanDuel. 9,000 on FanDuel. Holy hell. Uh, 9,000 on FanDuel. 8,600 on DK. So you're looking for 45. Man, people would be smashing the shit out of him if he were 8,000. It's a great matchup, but like, how much value can you really get out of Kemba at nine thousand? You need him to hit forty-five just to get back to neutral. Yeah, I'm gonna say that he's a four. We'll see how it all plays out, but let's see. Yeah, I guess Dame is gonna be you know forty percent owned or something ridiculous. Dwight Howard, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. I mean, that's a that's a big number, too. I haven't seen anything that says they're going to, like, play Rolo or anything, but I think that, like, it's hard not to want to smash Dwight tonight. Why wouldn't they? I mean, he should own the, the paint. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Um, you know what? Oh, straight three. I Dwight looks good tonight. You can't you can't ask for much better of a matchup. Um, Nick Batum seven thousand on Fanduel, sixty three hundred on DK. Needs thirty five. I'm not super enthused about Batum. He's a four. Most interesting person is probably Marvin Williams. Uh, 4,100 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. You know, I've got him in for 26 minutes if he hits that number. Um, Bulls do like to give up some extra threes. I think Marvin Williams could be an interesting uh, punt play as a GPP guy. I'm going to say he's a three. MKG is probably a four. I probably don't want to go any further down the line here unless we hear anything different news-wise. Um, so let's go to Chicago. Bulls 102.5 implied total is 11th, uh, second worst, tied for second worst on the uh, on the slate. Only the Kings are worse. So first up is Nawaba. 4,800 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Needs 
25 to be happy. Hmm. Um, I mean, he's just a four for me. He doesn't do enough with the basketball, especially with Levine in. Uh, Markinen, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. I'll go back to the well. He's not been playing well. Um, another down night last night. <clears throat> I uh, I had a decent amount of him. Let's see, where is his current? Yeah, like I'm probably a little high on him. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a little high on him, but he played so well early. I think that that established a very good baseline for him. Um. I'm going to say that he's a four. I'm going to have, you know, more than a little bit of him tonight, especially on a six-game slate. But one of these days will make me look smart. Uh, Levine I have very little interest in. Uh, also a four. 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. You need 38 out of him. And that's a, that's a high number. You can get there. I like him in GPPs. And then finally, Chris Dunn. Um, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Uh, I think he looks great on FanDuel. Needs 32. Put up 40 last night. Had 30 the two, uh, game before that. Um, I like Chris Dunn a lot. I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 2 and a DK 3. Never would have thought I would have liked Chris Dunn as much as I do. Uh, Bobby Portis, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Needs 35. Mm. I don't mind it. It's a crap price. I don't know, he's just a four, but... I don't know, for some reason he's jumping off the page to me. I don't know why. It just feels like a Bobby Portis night. And then uh, Felicio is just a four. Mostly GPP only. And by mostly, I mean completely GPP only. Uh, I wouldn't have him in any other scenario. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's go to Cleveland. Uh, the Cavs hosting the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Cavs are 11 point favorites at home um, Nets on the back to back 116 implied total is second for the Cavs so LeBron is 11-5 on FanDuel 11-7 uh, on DK like him a lot here I think that uh, this could be a really good spot for Braun um Nets like to put people on the line. Uh, LeBron, obviously, no stranger to shooting free throws. Let's see. Put up 50 in November, 65 earlier. I'm going to say he's a three, but I'll have a, a bundle of him. I feel like the Cavs and the Bucks play constantly together. I feel like I'm always picking between Braun and Giannis. Uh, I like Braun a lot, though. Um, just looking at this, on the surface, I feel like he's going to be my favorite stud. But that could be Lillard. Uh, JR is just a four for me. In fact, with the way the Nets limit threes, maybe I don't want any. Well, yeah, he's probably just a four. Hmm, okay. George Hill, 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. You need 23. Um, he's been all over the place. Uh, more of a facilitator now in Cleveland. He's just a four. Rodney Hood, 4,500, uh, 4,300 on DK. So you're looking 
for 22. I mean, he's been struggling there too, but uh, the Nets could be a place where he can go on a heater. Call it a four. Kind of just got to mix and match these role players. Tristan Thompson, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. You know, Brooklyn is terrible against bigs. Uh, Tristan needs 25 for value. I think that he can get there relatively easily. Um, I'm going to say that he is a three. Um, I really like him tonight. Has the opportunity to like really dominate the glass. It's probably about as far down as I want to go. Let's check out Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Just put a D on the end of Brooklyn. Oh, God. Tuesdays, man. Grr, Tuesdays. All right, uh, Nets 105 implied total is seventh. Let's see, D'Angelo Russell, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Terrible game last night. Needs 36 for value. Um, when was the NBA trade deadline? February, so, so February 9th, I guess. Did I bookmark that? Nope. I want to see what the Cavs' defense has been since they, uh, since the deadline. Um... When did Jordan Clarkson make his debut? Sorry, getting off on a tangent, but this is important. So Clarkson's first game with the Cavs was... Okay, so the 11th is what we want. So February 11th of 18. Can you not do that in this? Well, that's kind of annoying. Okay, let's just look at four factors then. Sorry guys, 2, 11, 17, okay, the Cavs, since, no, why is this not coming up now? Oh, 18, did I do that wrong the first time too? Alright, so the Cavs D has been middle of the pack since the trade deadline. Did I type the wrong date in before? No, I, I, that I did correctly, okay, you just can't do it there. Okay, so Cavs D hasn't been too crazy bad. Good to re good to know. Um, I still don't think it's going to be anything spectacular, particularly here against the Nets. Um, so I'm going to say that Russell is a three. I think he can bounce back. Uh, just be wary of that back-to-back. -back. Has he played in one yet? Um, not really. Tamari Carroll... 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, you know, you would expect him to play a bundle because of Braun. Um, the profile fits in pretty well. I'll say that he's a three. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. He's just a four for me. Um, I don't have any interest in Alan Crabb. I don't have any interest in Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, Karis Levert, though. 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. 
you know, you need 20. Um, I think that's very realistic for him. You just need to keep an eye on the back-to-back uh, with him and uh, Hollis Jefferson just coming back off of injury. But I think if we don't hear any weird news and Levert's just supposed to play, you know, 20 to 25 minutes, um, he's a decent GPP punt. And then Jared Allen, also going to be a four. Uh, I just, you know, I don't like real. I don't really like Brooklyn on the road in a back-to-back here. Let's go to Miami. So the Heat, 102.5 implied total is 11th. They are one-point underdogs at home against the Sixers. Uh, this is a tough game to want to be a part of from a fantasy perspective. Both teams uh, dramatically lower uh, their opponents' fantasy points per possession. So something to keep in mind there if you're looking for stacks. It'll probably be a little contrarian to have large swaths of this game. Um, so Richardson, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Uh, it makes me a little nervous. His minutes have been kind of weird. And if Kelly Olynyk is back, they're going to have 10-man rotation. So minutes are going to be interesting. I don't know how they'll be completely allotted. Um, So if Richardson gets 35 minutes, you know, I love him at that price. But if he's getting 27, it's a lot scarier, especially against the Sixers. But I think that at that 6,000 price level, even with the bad matchup, um, I think I have to call Richardson a three just because of his upside. Dragic, 6,100 on FanDuel, uh, 6,400 on DK. He's probably a 3 for me on FanDuel and a 4 on DraftKings. But I could easily drop that down to 4 on FanDuel. Not playable on DK, as weird as that sounds. He's he's teetering on the edge of both on each site. Uh, Whiteside, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. I mean, it's basically just how long do you think Whiteside can stay on the floor with Embiid? If you think it's a while, then you probably think that Whiteside has a decent game. Um, He would need 37 for value. He's been in the mid-30s basically every game in this last two, three-week stretch for him. Uh, So I'm going to say that he's a three. And then after that, I don't have any interest in anyone else. No... Wayne, no Tyler Johnson, no Linick, James Johnson. I, I don't want any of those guys. So the Sixers, 103.5 implied total is ninth. Again, uh, the Heat, very good defensively. It's going to be hard to find a ton to love here. Uh, ben Simmons is 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. I don't have any interest in him whatsoever. Um... I think that's just a a terribly high price in a really bad situation. Dario Saric is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Great. Um, So we're looking for 32 there. I actually don't mind that. I'm going to say that he's a 3. I think that's a good spot for him. I like that the price is coming back down. JJ is 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. So you're looking for 25. Um, I mean, he can get there, but you're going to need a very specific shooting night. And I'm not sure that the Heat are the team that are going to give that up. So I'm going to say that he's a four just because of his price. I'll have a bit of him in lineups, but can't go too crazy. And then the crown jewel of the Sixers. Joel Embiid is 10-2 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. Uh, So you're looking for 50. Now Miami does put people on the line a lot, which fits Embiid. I have him projected for uh, just over eight free throw attempts. Um, Hmm. 
Let's go check out Fantasy 5x5. Five five. I don't like this clouding my judgment usually, but I want to look at it now. So Embiid, 35th. They've given up... Five, four, zero. Five big games, four duds, zero monsters. So nobody has gone crazy against the Heat at center. Uh, I'm not going to go too nuts. I'm going to say that he's a three. He'll be relatively highly owned. Um, I like him. Uh, I don't think he's like a lock or anything, especially with, you know, Jokic on the slate, DeAndre Jordan on the slate. Um, Dwight. So, you know, there are options at center, but I think this game pretty much, I think this game fits Embiid well, even though I think his upside is sort of limited. I don't know. That was a long-winded way of saying, like, yeah, I'll have a decent chunk of Embiid. Best I can do. <laughs> uh, Bobby Covington, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, so he needs 25 He's just not been a fantasy performer lately. Uh, he's just a four. And if you want to get sneaky and you think that Bellinelli is going to keep getting uh, big minutes, you know, he played 27 in his past two. Um, at 3,600, uh, that's an interesting GPP guy. Um, you know, he can drop a couple threes and really put himself in a scenario where, you know, he can get to like 27, 28 fantasy points. Be very happy with that. Milwaukee now. So the Bucks 107.25 implied total is sixth. Uh, they are three point favorites at home against the Wizards. Weird game. Wish Wall was healthy. It'd be a really fun game to watch. I mean, it still should be, but yeah, even more so. Okay, so Middleton. What's Washington, I've looked at this before, what's Washington's defense like without Wall? Alright, so 107.3 implied total, or yeah, implied total, 107.3, 61st percentile overall. When Wall is off the floor, They get worse by a little bit. That makes sense. Okay, Chris Middleton. 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. You know, you're looking 38. Uh, that's Middleton's wheelhouse for sure. Um, I'm fine with it. I'll say that he's a three. Eric Bledsoe, who's been getting heavy minutes in his past couple, you know, 37, 37, 38. Arid Bledsoe, there it is, there's the first typo. Uh, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK, you're looking 40. Um, he's had a couple 40-point games before the All-Star break, had a 55-point uh, game right before the break. I have no problems with it here, although I think Sadoransky's been good on D lately. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's look at... DVP deep dive. Starting point guards against the Wizards in the past, I don't know, 15 games. It's probably close, right? Uh, let's go 12 games. Count Beal is a point guard in one of these, but yeah, Sadoransky's been okay. 3% reduction for other point guards. Only Lowry has gone completely crazy against him, went for 52. The rest of those games are relatively pedestrian. So, you know, something to keep in mind there for uh, whether or not you like Bledsoe. Sadoransky has been pretty good on D. Or just, you know, teams have the, the team has been good on D against point guards um, since Wall's been out. Giannis. 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-7 on DK. You're looking 55. 
Um, I feel like Giannis hammers on the Wizards for some reason. Am I making that up? Yeah, good. two 60-point games so far this year. Happened within nine days of each other. Uh, I, I'm fine with it. Uh, the, I don't see many reasons why I wouldn't have uh, an absolute ton of both Giannis and LeBron. Um, Tony Snell is Tony Snell. No, thank you. Uh, Henson at 5,500, 4,700 on DK. I want him to play a couple more minutes. I like it better when he's playing 35, but I'll say that he's a 4. No watch. I'm not going to stand up right now. Can't be standing anywhere. And then Jabari's Jabari. Um, if you want him in a lineup or two, I get it. But he's limited by that minutes cap. So the Wizards, 104.25 implied total is 8th. Um, why do they have a blank line at the top? Did I not refresh this? There we go. All righty. Bradley Beal, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. I feel like I'd like Bradley Beal a lot if Jason Kidd was still the coach of the Bucks. Now their defense is playing better. That's another thing I want to see. When was Jason Kidd fired? Twenty second, so we'll say January twenty third. How's the Bucks D been? Milwaukee defense third in the league since Jason Kidd has been fired. One hundred three point five defensive rating. Now, prior to that, or let's just say in general, they are 108.7 for the season. So they've basically improved by five or six points uh, per 100 possessions with Jason Kidd back. So keep that in mind uh, running up against Milwaukee. Um, they are a very, very different team, a much simpler defensive system now, and that's paying dividends for them, and that's something that needs to be taken into account um, when analyzing them for a DFS perspective. They are a very different defensive team than they were before. Less exploitable now. Um, much smarter on D. So Beal at 8,500 needs 43-ish. Um, now, even, given everything that I just said, uh, I still think that Beal is in an awesome spot here. I'm going to go three. Um... You know, I should be nervous about the defense of the Bucks, but there's something in me that tells me that Bradley Beal is is going to have a game tonight. I don't know, something about the day's rest. I don't know. This will be his fourth game in like six nights, though. Otto Porter, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. So you're looking for 36. Uh, he's been there a bundle of times lately. I'm fine with this. He should get a steady diet of uh, Giannis, I would imagine. Well, that so that'll be something interesting to look at. Um, NBA box score, new defense. I never remember what to type in. There it is. So when did they play last? January 15th. Let's take a look and see who guarded Giannis. Okay, so tw 20 possessions on Markeith Morris. 
19 possessions with Mike Scott. Nine or 15 possessions with Porter. Four of five from the field on Porter. Four of 12 on Markeith Morris. That's interesting. And they played like a week before that too, right? What was the other date? It looks like Porter didn't play one of those games. Uh, January 6th. So this is going to be without Auto Porter. So he's 5 for 5 from the field on Markeef. I just went, he couldn't miss. Yeah, when Giannis was guard, when Markeith was guarding Giannis, the team had 36 points in 27 possessions. That's, yeah, 133 offensive rating. Made five free throws, so he went at Markeith pretty hard in that first one. Okay, something to keep in mind. A little bit of extra info. Uh, Sadoransky, 6,900 on Fanduel, 5,800 on DK. He's just a four. Um, I don't care that he's going off. Uh, he's just too expensive. Kelly Oubre, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Um, he's just a four. Nothing crazy. And then Markeef, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Need 27. Okay. I could entertain that. Uh, he's just a four. Go to Portland. This one I'm interested in. Uh, Blazers, 111 implied total is fifth. They're 11 and a half point favorites at home against the Kings. Um, Kings give up the most three point, <clears throat> three point attempts um, any team in the league. Uh, that should fit. Dame pretty well, and Aminu pretty well. Well, it should fit everybody pretty well. So Dame is 10000 on FanDuel, 9700 on DK. That's a healthy price for Dame Lillard, but he's been on a bit of a heater. Um, look, all signs point to this being a game where Dame should just go bananas. Go, go bananas. Uh... I assume he's in a good spot. Let's check that out. Yeah, he's 17th overall. Fourth best spot for uh, point guards. Point guards haven't really gone crazy ham on the Kings yet. Um, so... You know, I'm going to say that he's a three. He looks great at point guard tonight for FanDuel. Um, I'll have a, a large amount of him, especially on a six-game slate. He stands out a lot to me. Uh, CJ at 7,700, 7,500 on DraftKings. I'm not as enamored with. Needs 38, um, which he hasn't hit on this chart at all so you know the matchup is good and he'd be getting like a steady dose of shitty dudes like buddy healed um when's the last time they played so i'd like to see who guard two there has it been recent okay so they just played february 9th um mccollum didn't do anything what did dame do it went for 67 in 27 minutes. Okay. Who guarded who there? So, February 9th. Because I think that's a good takeaway for this. Portland beat him by 18. 
Oh yeah, this is the game the Dame went crazy in three quarters. I remember now. Um, okay, so Dame, he had 30 possessions of De'Aaron Fox and 14 of Garrett Temple. Uh, he was 9 of 14 from the field on Fox, 6 of 8 from 3. So, you know, a little lucky from 3, but 47 points on 30 possessions for the team. That's a 156 defensive rating. He also had 21 on 14 possessions. Or the team had 21 points on 14 possessions against Garrett Temple. Uh, so while Dame was hot, um, he had no problem going at Fox or Temple. Whereas CJ got a lot of bogged down, and it wasn't the same sort of uh, separation. And he also wasn't shooting as much, but... Um, you know, Bogdan looking like he held CJ a little bit more. So I'm going to say that CJ is still a three just because it's the Kings. But I definitely like Dame um, a significant amount more. Aminu is 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Um, I wish that he was a little bit cheaper because I like taking him in games where um, the three-point uh, frequency lines up. But, you know, you need him to get to 25, which he can do. Um, I like him in GPPs as a three. Mo Harkless, 4,300 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. Uh, again, just a GPP guy. I will have a little bit of him, but he's a four for me. And then the last guy that I would want to look at would be Nurkic. 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Uh, you're looking for 36. Um, he played 25 minutes in that game on February 9th, had 20 fantasy points. He's at 40 in two of his last three. I'm cool with it. I'm going to say that he's just a three. To the Kings. Also known as the Bruno Caboclo Show. Bruno made his debut um, last night, played 19 minutes, 11 fantasy points. So, you know, he's the new star of the Kings. Uh, not a ton to like here, in my opinion. Uh, there's not a lot of things jumping off the page from a Kings perspective. He's blowing me up. Oh, the wife. So Bogdan is probably a four for me. Um, if I can grab this a little easier. I don't have any interest in any of these guys individually. Um, but on a six-game slate, I will have little bits of exposure to all of them. But nobody stands out. Uh, the only person that has like an exceptionally good price would be Scal on DK, but everybody's just sort of bleh, um, which could be a good thing. But you know, on a back-to-back -back going to Portland is not exactly um, the best sort of recipe for the Kings. Does anybody have what's considered to be a good matchup for Sacramento? Who's the highest king? So Justin Jackson in Portland has um, put up, been really good at putting up duds for small forwards. Zebo, but I don't really expect him to be getting any crazy minutes. So yeah, I wouldn't. You know, if like one of these Kings guys are like the fill-in at the end of their lineup, I'm okay with it. But they're all sort of like equally unimpressive. Last game, probably the most interesting game, Nuggets and Clippers. Uh, Nuggets 118 implied total, which is first. They're four-point favorites at home. And the big news is that uh, Paul Millsap is questionable. Um, you would expect him to be on a minutes limit. Right now I've got him in for 25 minutes, but even if we find out that that's a little bit lower, he's minimum salary on FanDuel. Uh, you need to have him... If we hear that he's playing 20 minutes or higher. Um, because I think that he can get you close to value. 
Let's dig in. So Gary Harris is 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. You're looking for like 34. Uh, hasn't had like a big breakout game lately. Is he a good offensive rebounder? Or I guess is anybody on Denver? That would be more interesting. Denver, an exceptional offensive rebounding team. Clippers, not a very good defensive rebounding team. So I'd like to see who that benefits the most. So Barton as a guard. Jamal Murray as a guard. Wilson Chandler. Bleh. Okay. Okay, Gary Harris. I mean, he you know he has the ability to, to go off. You would think... You know, he could get a little bit of uh, Lou Williams, not exactly a stalwart defensively. Gary Harris, actually 12th overall on Fantasy 5x5's uh, Big Spots tracker. Um, Clippers haven't given up any monster games to shooting guards, but they have given up a bunch of big games. I'll say that Harris is a 3. I'll say the same for Will Barton. Uh, Jamal Murray, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. This feels like a really good Jamal Murray game. Have they played recently? Nope. Yeah, I'm fine having uh, a bunch of Jamal Murray. Now, Jokic is the one we want to pay attention to. 10-2 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. So you're looking 50 He's had 50 in three of his last four, and in the one that I'm not counting, he had 74. I want to say that he's had a triple-double in, like, three straight games or something crazy like that. No, three out of his last four games have been a triple-double. Um, really starting to feel himself. Uh... They beat San Antonio twice, Milwaukee on the road. They lost to Houston at home, but, you know, that's respectable. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that they'd be trying to integrate Millsap with the way that Jokic is playing, but I don't have any problems um, taking a look at Jokic. Where does he land on the uh, big game tracker? 22nd. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not super worried about DeAndre. I'll say Jokic is a three. Nothing crazily standing out, except for the fact that I don't want Wilson Chandler. And then Paul Millsap is... Uh, mm, ah, man. I'm going to say just a four on FanDuel. Because we need more information, but that minimum salary thing is going to be interesting. Clippers, 114 implied total is third. Um, yeah, going to be a ton to like. Let's scoop everybody all the way down to DeAndre. Austin Rivers, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. You're looking 28. Um, usually gets in that mid twenties range. Uh, seems pretty safe as like a cash guy. I'm gonna say that he's a four. I don't have a terribly large amount of interest in him, but gets the minutes. Tobias Harris, 7,500 and 7,600. Uh, you're looking for 38. Had 58 in his last game. Got a couple days rest after that, which is good. Um, I'm fine with Tobias Harris. That's a three for me. Gallo, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Looking 32. Didn't play in the back half of that back-to-back, -back, so he's gotten a decent amount of rest. Gallo going back to Denver. I'll say that that's a three. Lou Will, 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. He needs 36. He's had 40 in his last two. Um, I mean, I just, I like it. He's a guy that can go off. I'll have a good amount of him um, in GPPs. And then DeAndre, 8,300. 
on FanDuel, 7,900 on DraftKings. I think he's just a four. Um, I don't particularly like the price for him right now. He does grade out really well. He's uh, 15th. He's the third highest center matchup. So that's something to, you know, at least keep on the back burner. But I'm not a huge fan of his tonight. And then I don't want any of Tyrone Wallace or Taya Dosic. So that's what we've got. It's um, It reads as a pretty balanced slate on the surface. I'm anxious to see what happens when I dump in these projections. Because it feels like uh, it's not going to stand out all that well. Bump up the rando. And to a hundred go okay so I'm gonna have to limit Millsap here or it's gonna look ridiculous so if we exclude Millsap which I think is a fair bet let's see what this looks like yeah so a ton of marketing a ton of Levert a ton of done all of that makes sense to me you know I do think that I'm higher on marketing than anyone Although, if you're following Osimo's uh, ratings, we've been in lockstep, so I assume that he's had a relatively large amount of him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like Dunn. Can you? There are situations where you can get LeBron and Giannis, which is interesting. They're kind of scary lineups, but. You know, if you want to do something he like this, I don't love it, but I would probably try to make the choice between the two. And given the choice between the two, I feel like I'm leaning LeBron. So if I pull Giannis, I could really go any direction there. I did think Marvin Williams looked good. Get that Dame lineup. I could entertain something like that. Let's check out DK. Oh, let's text the wife back. Oh, all right. DraftKings in. Change, bump, rando, and go. Even still getting 50% Millsap, and his price isn't even, like, good <laughs> on DK. He's 5,200, and he's still popping. So it's just interesting to think about. Um, man, you can go in so many different directions here. So, we get more Giannis than LeBron or DK, which I think is interesting. I'm happy to go that direction. And then, uh, I like Jamal Murray there. So I'd be able to entertain something like this on here. Where's the first non- uh, Millsap lineup. It's a little bit more uh, Milwaukee than I would like, but it seems like Milwaukee is the team that you need to have a piece of on DK. I don't know. News is going to be interesting. Uh, there's just so much balance. The the color gradient. I see. You know, not a lot of guys standing out. So it'll be fun. Um, as usual, I will be live tonight before lock, starting at 6, uh, live on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, if you're ever looking for anything for me, uh, my username or anything like that is going to always be Josh Engelman. Um, 
same as the website, Twitter, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, so, you know, like, subscribe, check out Reddit, follow me on Twitter, and um, let's win some money tonight. Bye, everybody.